Okay. Because I have said that without Christ, all that you have left is an angry God, some people um, are, of course, going to take that as God is all anger. He's all judgment. He's all mad. He's all fierce. And even though those things are in God, just like they are in man, but and not, but with controlling God. Okay, and we're going to look at that. Uh, God has just as much compassion as Jesus does, and uh, truthfully, they they have the same nature. But I have said that Christ is um, God's mercy sent out because because the Bible says that He came to save. I can't get situated. He came to save that which was lost. Okay, and he has not lost that track, uh, that train of thought of what he uh, what he came to do. He hasn't lost the, the the big picture, so to speak. But he stays focused on that. God's anger. We receive that from God. This is what this is what the Lord is doing. He is offering us a way. Jesus says, "I am the way, the truth, and life." So God is offering us this way, this Christ way to accept, to get back into the presence of God again, get back into the mercies of God again. And that's why I've said that uh, without Christ, that all you have left is the anger and the judgment and, the, and those kind of things from God because the Bible talks about it's, it's fearful to fall in the hands of an angry God. Okay, because because um, um, we come before him as uh, as his enemy, the Bible tells us that flesh and blood is act is literally the enemy of God. Everything that our flesh desires is against God's nature. Our spirit, and when, when you become Christian, your spirit and your flesh war against one another, and uh, it's. And that's what it's doing with God. It's warring against God. So when we walk before... Okay, let me explain how that is a little bit, okay? Wars against the spirit in you. Wars against your flesh. Uh, okay. When your eyeball sees something really lustful to look at, um, your spirit's saying like, Whoa, hold up, hold up here a minute now. You know that the Word of God says, Thou shalt not commit adultery. And your flesh is like, Yeah, but God won't care. It starts making excuses, you know. It's kind of like this little girl that's living with us. She, everything with responsibility attached to it, man, she finds some way to get around it. Um, she tries to find a way to get around it. But, but with that thing that uh, she's doing she doesn't realize that hey I've raised a teenager before who did those exact same things so I'm on to that you know am I perfect in it no but I'm on to that one <laughs> and I will use what I know what the Lord has showed me so and okay this is what I'm talking about um, Hebrews 4:12 says this I'm gonna read it in a couple different versions and I want you to see the most correct version which is the King James okay the King James is the most accurate Bible that we have in English today I've read a, I have like right here in front of me I have like 12 different interpretations of the Bible well let me read let me see how many one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Okay, I have uh, 21 different versions of the Bible right here in front of me. And I have Matthew Henry's uh, commentary along with that. Okay, so, um, so it's not like I'm speaking from an uneducated point of view. <laughs> okay, so, <clears throat> excuse me. And... Um, and I find the King James to be the most accurate interpretation of that. Of all the studies I've done about things I've looked at, 
it is still the most accurate according to the Spirit of God, according to the love of God, according to those things in, in the direction that we need to go as far as the personality of God is concerned. The King James is the most accurate. Okay, that's what I'm saying now. Okay, end of that. Okay, that's what I'm saying. God is God, the angry part of God. You could get on the angry part of God. You can stay there. Or, um, and, and this is why, because love is a separator. When your mom and dad sees you doing something uh, with another child that continuously gets you in trouble, continuously causes trouble, continuously, 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 that mom and dad who loves that child will separate those two children. And this is what God, in his personality, uh, is doing with man, is separating us. God separates us. See, I don't go down to the bar. Yeah, I, yeah. You know, I don't think there's just evil goes on there. I know there's some things goes on there that's just a lot of innocent fun. I know that, but I am not about to go join that innocent fun because there's so much evil around that innocent fun. You'd be like Lot going down to Sodom and Gomorrah and moving into the city, you know. And he he just he moved in to, to get with some of the. You know, it's kind of I. It's kind of. It's, you know, when the Bible talks about Lot moving down to the city, it doesn't say he actually moved in right away. But you know how they you know how they come out against those other men, those two angels that came to the city, and how that those men gathered around the house and were going to take them by force. Well, how come none of that ever happened with Lot when he first moved into that place? Because because sin overtakes you gradually. You know, I mean, they had a they had an inkling that these two men weren't going to stay long because they didn't look like they belonged in the place. You know, those two angels. Yet they did not know <laughs> the power that those two had in their hand. Just like a lot of folks look at me, they say, "Well, pfft, you don't look like much." Neither did William Brennan, but his prophecies are still coming to pass. Go go look up on the internet, William Brennan. Any case, okay. But here's the verse. Hebrews 4.12 For the word of God, this is the international version, is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to the dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. And that is a fairly good interpretation of what the King James actually says. Okay, and here's the King James. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart <laughs> do you hear that part even the intents of the heart and and God separates us he's busy every day of our life love separates you from evil that's why pretty soon Jesus is going to come down in in the clouds of glory and he's and in a moment in a twinkling of an eye the body the Bible tells us that our body will be changed and that we will go from this place to the portals of heaven Christ is coming back to receive us and what the Bible calls uh, how is it the the taking away or the oh it's not exactly the way it says it it's called the rapture and uh, it, it the word rapture is not in the Bible but it's uh, the word rapture is a word that men has affixed to what Jesus has said he's going to do come back and receive he says if I go away I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am there you may be also okay so and he says I will come again he doesn't say just I you know you're just not going to die and go there but uh, he will receive you unto himself all right God bless thank you for joining me this is why I'm talking about God is a separator he's just not evil he's a loving God but he is also filled with judgment. He's, and he's filled with anger against sin. If you have not gotten rid of that sin out of your life, if you still love sin, listen, you're standing in a dangerous place as far as God is concerned. Without Christ, you're in danger. All right, God bless. Thank you for joining me. We'll see you next time. Another great message right here across in the middle ministry.